we're going to dive on in today. Um, today, we are going to have a lot of fun. We are going to be talking about email. I know, what a, a glorious and interesting topic. But bigger than that, we are going to talk today about saving you time. Um, I wrote this article a while ago about saving time and some of the things that I do to save time in my own business. Uh, and one of the biggest things is I have a, a procedure, and this is something that Craig and I both use in our email inboxes um, to save us a ton of time. So Ronnie coming in from Sarasota, Florida. Hello, hello. Welcome on in. Um, so yeah, so we're going to be covering that today. Um, it is going to be a fun fun day filled uh, with some tricks to save you time right inside of your inbox uh, and right inside of Gmail. Now, we're going to be using Gmail as our example today. However, 99% um, of what we are covering today is also capable. Uh, you're also capable of doing inside of almost any email inbox out there. So whether it's Outlook or Yahoo or your work account, whatever it might be, um, it's very, very easy to do exactly what we're going to show you today. And if anyone has specific issues that they're running into, uh, big picture things that they know they're wasting time on, I'd love to hear about those in chat as well. Um, let us know because we always love addressing stuff like that. So a few more folks are saying hello. Michelle, hello from Wesley Chapel, Florida. Hello, hello. And Orland, Orland Park, Illinois. Hello, Harriet. Hello, Michelle. It's great to see you both. Thank you. Thank you for joining. So before we uh, dive in and get in any further today, I do want to mention um, that this is all getting brought to you by two organizations, um, one of which is Craig's. I'm also involved in that, but that is the Real Estate Technology Institute. Uh, if you are looking to learn any sort of technology or marketing tactics for your business, it is an absolutely uh, great account to have. Um, there are what thousands of videos, Craig. Uh, over 2,500 last count. Woo, it, 20, but it grows all the time. So 2,500 <laughs> training videos. Um, and you go a step further, and uh, a bunch of associations even have it as a member benefit at this point. So check with your association to see if it is a member benefit in your area, or you can check with our ETI to see if it is as well. Next. Um, I'd like to mention Service for Life, which is my organization. Uh, if you are interested in building a 100% referral business, um, easily following up with your past clients, your friends, um, your sphere to generate 100% of your business from that group so that you're not chasing leads and chasing deals and doing all that sort of stuff anymore, uh, I, I urge you to check out Service for Life. Uh, agents have used it successfully to do that. Uh, for over 20 years at this point, and even agents my age that are doing it today are having incredible success with it. So I definitely want you to check that out, um, but definitely check out reti.us or check out serviceforlife.com. All right, now let's dive in. And as we mentioned, today we're going to be talking about uh, three tricks to manage an unruly inbox. Um, and you know what, Craig, I'm going to put you on the spot here for a second. And I know Craig's like, oh my God, what? What are the what are some of the biggest problems that you see people run into when it comes to email, when it comes to their inbox? Um, to me, it's two major things. One is um, they never get to what people love to call inbox zero, where they feel like they have actually accomplished getting through their emails, and then the pile just gets bigger and bigger. So that's one thing is getting down to zero. That way it becomes manageable from that point on. Uh, and then the other one is just taking too long to respond to each email. That's to me, like they don't take the time. We're going to teach that kind of stuff more in our master class. Yep. Uh, but, you know, how you can respond to email almost in seconds versus having to sit there and think out every word you're going to write every time. Absolutely. To me, those are made. Absolutely. And I want to be clear up front about something, though, with everybody, which is that today we are going to be covering something um, that is not the next app or the next thing that you need to buy, or the next whatever it is that you need to add on and learn and all that sort of stuff. What we're talking about today is some simple practices that you can take and a few little tricks that we use to save time in our daily basis. And actually, we're gonna break this down as we go um, into exactly how much time 
we are saving you by doing each one of those things and how much time you can save on a daily basis by doing these things. So um, I want to put that into perspective, right? Because it's uh, it's not all about saving hours at a time. And I think that a lot of times when people think, oh, a time savings or a, uh, you know, whatever, they immediately go, well, is that going to save me an hour here and there and here and there? But the, the issue is, is that it's not necessarily about saving an hour or two hours or three hours at a time. It's about saving yourself a minute or two minutes or five minutes in a task that you do every single day. And it, it amazes me because when, you know, you take that extra minute or two minutes or three minutes to do it on a daily basis, you don't really think about it. You're like, well, it's an extra two minutes to go click through all my emails and delete everything one by one. Not a big deal. It's two minutes. But you start playing those things out over time and you start realizing how much of your life um, you get back simply by basically um, simply by saving yourselves a couple minutes here and there. And actually, Craig, let me do this for you. I forgot to share the slides with you. There you go. You can see my screen oh, now. There. there you go. Yep. Perfect. I got it. All right. Sorry about that, buddy. Um, so let's put this into perspective here for a second for everybody in terms of time savings and the amount of time that you can save by saving little incremental bits of time as you go. So let's say you can save yourself 10 minutes every single morning as part of a daily routine. In fact, what we're going to teach you today is going to save you way more than 10 minutes each morning because you're going to go, oh, wow, I do that every single morning and I can shave 10 or 20 or 30 minutes off my day in this one task. Now, let's say that you're not working <laughs> seven days a week, which I know in this market, most of you are working seven days a week at this point. Um, if you're only doing this five days a week, right? We're looking at 250 days a year that you're dealing with your inbox, you're dealing with email, and you've got some time that you can save out of your day. So that's 41 hours a year. That's 41 hours a year. That's a full work week. Well, half a work week for some of us, but it's work week for a lot of people that you can save yourselves each year. Now, think about what you can actually do with that time, right? A vacation for a week, an extra deal that you could put together in that week. There's a lot of things you can do to save yourself some time um, and think about that time savings as 10 minutes here and there adds up to a huge amount of time. And it, Craig, I'm going to put this over to you, but you see this, right? 17 days over your lifetime. Oh, yeah. It's kind of wild, isn't it? Absolutely. And if people don't think that way, they're like, just give me the quick fix. But little tricks can save you so much time. And I talk about it all the time. The difference between a geek and a non-geek is a lot of the geeks typically know these little sneaky tricks. Yep. Exactly it. The geeks are able to get through what takes everybody else 10 or 20 minutes in two minutes because they've learned some of these basic tricks uh, over time. Now, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna teach you a few of those tricks that we use ourselves. Um, and the first one is we're gonna talk about email and the ultimate time suck when it comes to email. And we're gonna go into a little bit of an extra problem and the, the, uh, the first two tricks that I'm gonna give you, the first two things that we're gonna teach you today um, kind of stack on top of each other. So the, we're going to teach you a trick to begin with in this first section. And then section two, you need to know section one to be able to enact it and learn trick number two. So trick number one has to do with searching your email, okay, and finding some sort of email from years past. Now, let me ask everybody, has there ever been a point in time where you go back trying to search for an email and go oh my God, I can't find it. Or even worse, it takes you, and maybe you do find it, but it takes you 10 minutes or 20 minutes of scrolling and this and that and that. I mean, Craig, have you run into that problem before? Oh yeah, it's happened. Right? I mean, it's definitely happened. Um, and I'll, I'll ask chat, has, has fo have folks who are watching this, have you guys run into this problem before? Because I know it's happened to me um, where at some point in my day, I've got to search for an email. And if it's not within the last week or two, uh, all of a sudden it can become really, really, 
daunting. So is that something that folks um, have a challenge with or, or run into from time to time that they can't find different emails or different content in their email? Let me know in chat and we'll dive into exactly what you need to do to search those emails. Um, and then we'll get into even more about how you can get rid of them all at once and, and some things like that as we go. So we're talking here about searching email and this is where the first trick comes in. Okay. Now, the first trick here is if you're in Gmail, if you see the search bar up at the top, there's a little down arrow that you can click that will give you more options. Now, most people know about this tool, right? You can click that little down arrow for the search and you can add some stuff like who, you know, who's it coming from or to or the subject line or maybe, you know, some dates that it was within or whether it has an attachment, things like that. Okay. Now, I, I'm expecting that many of you know this trick. So this isn't anything new for a lot of folks um, and it's something that people can use and can use effectively. However, what most folks don't know is there is a whole nother world to searching your email that's not included in this little dropdown. And they're what's called search operators. And what that means is they're little pieces of, I hate calling them code, but little pieces of code that tell the system exactly what you're searching for. So I want to show those to you today because I use these all the time to not only search my email, but to organize my email and figure out what I need to do on a daily basis. So let me ask how many folks first, let me know if you knew that this existed for this dropdown, but also let me know if you knew that there were some extras that didn't exist in this dropdown. All right. Now I want to give you some examples. Okay. Of what you can do in your email that are outside of the, the, the normal dropdown that you see every day. And there are a bunch of others out there that you can go search uh, and you can Google what's available um, in Outlook in Gmail in any of those for what's called search operators, but these are some of my favorites. Okay. So you can specify the sender who it's from, but you can specify a name, not just the email address. Usually that from section is looking for an email address. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can also look for emails that have been labeled in a specific way. So we'll teach you how to do this and set up labels and have your email automatically organized. Okay. But once you've done that, you can then start searching for emails based on what label, what organization, what category you've given those emails and had Gmail automatically give those categories for you. So that's a big one. You can also search for emails that don't have a label at all. So if you have, if for me, for example, I have my email all set up where Gmail is automatically organizing and labeling everything for me as it comes in and putting them in its categories. But there's some things that might slip through the crack. There's even searches that allow you to do that and see the things that are not labeled in your inbox. But let me take you through a few more. The next one I really love and that is huge for us is attachments and attachments with a specific type. So in the dropdown on the uh, Gmail, like normal Gmail, you can select has attachment and that'll, you know, is very helpful. We'll let you know and we'll only pull emails that have an attachment. However, what if you were only looking for PDFs? We're only looking for a Word document. We're only looking for an Excel spreadsheet. Well, you can look for emails with exactly that. So what you do is in that search bar right up at the top, you type file name colon PDF space from colon Amy. And you start building all of these on top of each other. And you can search for very, very specific things in your emails. Now, the beautiful part of this is because Google has access to the background data behind PDFs, they actually search for content for the text inside of a PDF in your email. So if you're looking for a specific PDF 
that you've lost in your email from years past, but you know it's there, and you know some specific words that are in that PDF, it is a breeze to pull out of your inbox because all you have to do is these exact words, file name, PDF, and all of a sudden you're able to very, very easily start finding and organizing things as you see fit. Now, some of my other favorites in here, um, and this one is a little hidden. One is is colon unread. So you can pull all of the unread emails in your inbox. So I can, I can actually add them together. In colon inbox space is colon unread. Easy peasy. All of a sudden, I have all of the unread emails in my inbox right in front of me, ready to go. I don't have to think about, well, oh, that one's not a, I've dealt with this one, I've, whatever it is. It is super duper easy um, to do that. Frank, are there any that you particularly like or use or any of that sort of stuff? Um, these are probably the main ones, but I mean, I've done, I've set up, and I know we're going to talk about rules and filters in a second, but um, a lot of times I create, along with the search operators, rules and filters to either uh, help me find something quicker, like creating a folder out of something I wanted to pull in, or yep. to get rid of. Things. Like I teach it all the time how to get rid of spam. Probably the best way to get rid of a spam is a rule or a filter. Yep, exactly. And you know what? That's a perfect segue, and I might as well leave you to explain this one, because that's exactly what we're going to get into next. And the reason I said that you need to learn all these pieces in section one before we jump into section two here and these rules and filters so that Gmail automatically does all this stuff for you is because all of these same search operators that I've shown you here and all of those same search tools that we've gone over can be used when it comes to building filters to have Gmail automatically do stuff for you. Now, Craig, um, this is easily adds one week to your year. Uh, easily adds 10 minutes a day. Uh, but you want to show folks, you know, or, or walk through folks how to do this? Yeah, absolutely. So in Gmail, um, you basically just go to your settings, which is that little gear icon um, when you're in your Gmail account. And then one of the uh, tabs inside of your settings is called filters. And what a filter allows you to do is it's almost like saying, I want to create a custom folder for a customer. I want to create a rule that if something happens, I want to create it where it pulls all the emails in that do this kind of action. So let's, and one thing that I teach all the time is you might want to create a rule or a filter for each one of your customers. Uh, and that way you can have like almost like a folder because it creates, you know, like a, uh, like Google creates, um, what are they called? Uh, labels, which is kind of like a folder by doing this. So you could have one label with all your clients' activity in one place, not having to sift through the entire inbox. You just click on their label, and you'll see everything in one place. So you can do that for each individual customer. Uh, you can create it for specific uh, things, like maybe you want to create one for a certain city. I want to be able to look at all the leads I get from one city versus another one or a neighborhood that you farm. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, it's also a great way to clean up spam because we talk about this all the time in security side of things, you got to be really careful clicking unsubscribe links because sometimes a kind of a spammer's entire intention is to get on your nerves enough to get you to click unsubscribe. So they're trying to trick you or annoy you to click unsubscribe. Yep. So unsubscribe links, you got to be careful clicking them. But if you're like, how did this company get my name and my email address? I don't even know who they are. They're getting on my nerves you'd be smart to go create a rule or a filter to get rid of them than clicking on subscribe. Absolutely. So there's a lot of advantages or ways to use these, whether it's kind of getting through the inbox quicker or staying nice and organized with you and your clients or getting rid of spam, but they're really easy to do. Yep. Now these filters are very, very easy to set up. Um, and we're going to go into a lot more depth on this and a whole bunch of other stuff in a masterclass that we're doing coming up. Uh, and we'll get into more details on that, but it's so easy to set up a filter. That same search box at the top of the page that we talked about that's in your Gmail, if you click that little drop down to get all the extra features um, for what you can search by, if you fill in any of that criteria, instead of clicking search, one of the options next to it is create filter. And that filter um, sets it up where you it automatically creates it and it asks you what labels you want to apply. 
Do you want it to go to a specific folder? Do you want it to skip the inbox? What do you want to do with that email automatically based on the parameters that you've given it? So let's say you know every email from a specific person from an email address is a client email. It might help to have uh, Google, to have Gmail, to have your inbox automatically tag that as a client email or some sort of label. Now I have a very, very basic labeling system that I use that I would highly suggest uh, implementing in your own business that will save you a ton of time every morning by setting up these filters um, and then using these labels correctly. So email that comes into your inbox can really be organized into three categories. And that's about it. Now we can add, and you're welcome, I have a bunch of other labels and categorization and rules and things that I've added beyond this. But this is the core of what I use on a daily basis to save myself time. So every email that comes in essentially can go into three categories, right? It might have other ones, but it can go into these three. The first is primary. Those are emails that actually need a response from you. You need to respond to a client when they get in touch with you. You need to respond to, um, you know, maybe it's a, a staff member or an assistant or a mentor or somebody that you're working with who, no matter what, you want to respond and it's appropriate that you respond directly to those emails. Essentially, they're the top of the things that you're going to work with. The second label in the second category is what I call notifications. These are emails that, well, you might need to read, but you don't necessarily need to do anything with. Maybe it's your, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a, a notification or a newsletter that you're getting, right? Maybe your association is notifying you about cool new programs and, and member benefits and things that they're doing for you. And maybe you need to take action, but you don't necessarily need to respond to that email, okay? That's what I would consider notifications, things that you would need to read through, glaze through quickly, but can quickly archive and get rid of a whole lot once you've gone through that amount of information. And then the third category is what I call bulk. If you're not gonna unsubscribe or you're not going to set up a rule to just automatically delete these, Put them into a bulk category. That is, you know what? Sometimes I might read it. Sometimes I might not. I don't really need to. But no matter what, I definitely don't need to respond to whatever it is coming into this folder. Okay. Now, you set up those three filters. So you go through and anybody that comes in, you put in their email address and you say create filter and you put them into any client, for example. You New client comes in. The very first time that an email comes in from them, you take a quick extra 10 seconds, say, I'm going to create a filter. If it's from their email address, we're going to put them into a primary inbox. I'm going to, uh, they need, they need to get a response from me. Okay. You do the same thing. Anytime you get an email in that's not labeled, you figure out what the rule is and you take 10 seconds to add it to that rule. Then, Every morning from that point forward becomes as simple as this. And this is what I, I mean, I do this every day. And it's actually, you don't even have to type this stuff in because once you type this in the first time, you can save it as a bookmark and just click a link to have this search performed in your inbox. So let's look, okay? Cleaning your inbox every morning is easy as one, two, three. And I mean that literally one. Lay, you search for label bulk in inbox. Boom. There's all the stuff you can select all and delete. Okay. Step two, label notifications in inbox. Those are all the emails that you need to quickly glance through to see if you can, you know, you really need to dive into them. You need to read them further uh, and do anything, you know, obtain that information. But if not, usually you can select them all, mark them as read and either archive them or delete them accordingly. And then within 30 seconds, right? Within a minute, you are at a point where all you're dealing with in your inbox are those primary emails that you need to respond to, your clients, your staff, 
your mentors, all of the people that you're working with that you need to, you know, other colleagues in the deal, lenders, whatever, title people, whatever it might be. You have all those people together in front of you, organized, ready to go, um, ready so you can start your day. And I'll give you an example of exactly what this looks like. I got a little fancy with it. And some days I even just do it all at once where I say, give me labels or notifications or bulk that are in my inbox. Um, and all of a sudden, now I'm looking at a bunch of emails that I can quickly get rid of. Make sense? Was that helpful before? we? And we have another one here. That's just trick number two. We, we've got one, Craig, is, <laughs> hold on. Say, how incredible is that? that? We haven't even gotten to number three. That is trick number two. Um, let me ask, did that help some people? Is that something that's helpful to everybody uh, and something that you can see saving time in your own business? I know I see in the chat. I've, nobody said it since, but you know, a couple people earlier, Gene and Ronnie and Miriam were saying they didn't know about some of these tricks, the search operators and things like that. So. Yep. Well, I think there's about a 10, maybe 15 second delay between us actually talking yeah. and what chat ends up with. So I always give it a few extra seconds here. Um, for folks to let us know in chat, but I, I just, I hope that was helpful for a lot of people. Um, and then the last one we'll dive into. So that's number two, um, of the two of the major, major tricks that we use consistently to save time, um, particularly with our email. Um, are you doing this? Uh, Michelle, just said, that's a good question. Are you doing this, uh, on your desktop or on the gmail.com website? So you can do any of these tricks at gmail.com or if you have a business account, what's called Google Workspace. Yep. Um, you can do it in any of those. On the mobile app, I don't think you can do it from the mobile app. Uh, you can. But from the search works in search works same in, in mobile app. The search does, but I don't know if you can create filters there. I'd have to look for that. I've so filter yeah, so filters are a little bit different. Um here, let me bring this up here. Uh, hold on. And of course I get all the notifications in the world while we're doing yeah, it. Yeah, no, that's what, I'm looking really quickly to see. I've never tried to create that from a computer from a phone. So you um, but I'm looking really quick to see. Right. So here. here's the thing. So you can create filters and labels. Um, but it's not done the same way on a mobile device uh as it is on web. I would highly it, it's like you have to go the whole way into settings and the whole way in. I would highly suggest um, taking the time to do this on a computer and set up these filters on a computer. The, the search results, absolutely. Those you can use anywhere using those searches uh, are, you know, um, absolutely. So funny enough, Karen, you can definitely see this. Um, I have this exact content. Uh, in terms of these tricks and these operators as a blog post on Agent Inner Circle. And if you give me a second here, I will actually go grab that um, and you can get a reference right to it. And uh, and it's really easy there. All the content is there for it. Yeah, I apologize. We're, we're uh, Karen mentioned you're, we're going a little fast. I apologize. We tried it. When we started this, Craig and I said we wanted to do this in like a half an hour short workshop. And we always try to cram We've yet in. To hit that. <laughs> We've yet to hit that. Uh, and we always try to cram in way too much information. So I will try to slow it down a little bit. My apologies. Um, I'll try to slow it down a little bit and uh, and maybe a tiny bit less info and a little more thorough when uh, when we do that. So the filter definitely does. The search does. Um, in fact, it even saves my like. You can actually see it here suggested mail searches it actually saves my searches of label bulk notifications etc those are all right there like you can see it label notifications in in sorry it's not come on there we go label notifications in inbox etc it's all it it actually if you run them a bunch of times will save those and then if i run that that's exactly what i get and i can't show you my inbox at the moment because it's there are some projects yeah, that have not been announced yet that i cannot 
share with folks, but we've, we've got some cool announcements uh, coming up. Thank you, Craig. Craig just posted it. Um, it says, this Google trick saves me 60 hours a year. Um, I did this as a blog article, but I figured we would come and try to do it in a little bit more depth uh, and answer questions um, as we go. Was that the right one, by the way? Yep, I that's exactly the right one. You got it. You nailed it. Okay. Good. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so the, the search, like we talked about, the search does work. Filters are, you can technically set them up for mobile, but they're a pain in the butt. And I would highly suggest taking the time to set up the filters while you're at your computer. Um, and the thing is this, when you, the, the, I, I want to add a little side note for everybody, Craig, which is this. I think a lot of people get um, scared or nervous or whatever it is that like, oh my God, I'm going to have to go back through all my old emails to do this. One of the things oh, you that can say, you can even say, I want it to start from the right. entire history of my account or starting from today. Like, exactly. When you set up a filter or these things, you, you determine whether it's going to be a new one or if you want to go back through your entire history. Yep, exactly. So it will do that. So for me, it's very, very rare at this point that I get a new email in that's from somebody I've never, you know, dealt with before or a vendor I have or whatever. And it's like, you know, at the beginning, yeah, I had to go through and set up a number of notifications to start. But the trick is you just, on a daily basis, when you see one that's not auto-filtered, do it. Take the 10 seconds to do it because the amount of time that you save overall over years is enormous. I mean, it, it literally adds hours, weeks to your year. Um, so people are, people always... Do you get this, Craig? People always ask you how you're so efficient or like how you get whatever oh, yeah. done and whatever yeah, amount of time. Like, and like these, that, these are the types the of little tricks. The difference between a geek and a non-geek is yeah. the tricks. Right. And, and a lot of people will, you know, for us, think that it's some, that we save all this time or that we're efficient, et cetera, because we have some app that people don't or that we have some thing like that. The reality is, it's that we've taken some time to learn these little tricks, okay? Now, I'm gonna go into one more trick that has saved me more time over the years than both of the things that we just talked about combined, okay? Now, here's the trick. Keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts. I know, I know this might be boring. <laughs> But this is one of the most time-saving um, items and things that you can learn uh, over time and use efficiently. And let me ask you, Craig: Is that do you use? Are you a are you a keyboard shortcut lover? Oh, all the time, nonstop. Yep. Like it, it's it really, especially for things like copying and pasting and you know all kinds of stuff like that. It really does save. I mean, every single time you do it, it saves a bunch of time. Yep. So, uh, and Ronnie asked, is there going to be a recording of this going back to, uh, to go back to? Yes, absolutely, Ronnie. There is going to be a recording. It'll be right here in the group. Uh, once this is done being live, it takes a little bit of time for Facebook to process things. But as soon as that is done, um, it will be up and live and ready to watch. So as soon as they're done processing it. So absolutely. Now, Craig, you mentioned a couple of these right off of what you use them for, right? Do you copy and paste oh, yeah. often, right? Um, do you have to mm -hmm. right click very often? And for those Mac users, right clicking can be helpful at times. Um, do you ever have trouble? Like, let me ask, have you ever gone to a website and said, I'm looking for these exact words inside of a website? All of those things you can do without your hands leaving the keyboard. Okay. All of them. And there are amazing, amazing shortcuts that you can use. And we're just going to cover a couple of them today. Some of these you might already use, um, but these are ones that I use, I mean, literally every day and things that save me a lot of time. And I hope these are just eye opening because your entire keyboard can be used for keyboard shortcuts. If you use control and some or a Mac command um, and some combination of another letter, they almost all do something. Okay. It's just learning what they do and which ones are the most helpful in your life. So I'll point out a few that I use that I think are very, very helpful. Copy, cut, and paste. Um, so if you're needing to copy and paste items over and over, 
you don't have to drag the whole item, right click, click copy, right click, click paste, okay? You can very easily control C for copy, uh, control V for paste, or control X for cut. Now the other one that helps a ton going along with that is control A. Okay, most people will know control V or control C, the copy and paste stuff. Control A is select all. So let's say you have a description. Instead of having to, with a mouse, highlight the entire description, you just click into the field of the description, control A, the whole thing is highlighted. Control C, it's copied. Click to another window, paste it. Control V and you paste it. Your left hand never leaves the keyboard. Um, you're, you never have to use right click. You never have to use extra options. Or say you're looking for information on a page. Um, control F is find. Okay. So if even in any browser, in fact, I would say do it right now. You can hit, if you're not on a phone, um, you can hit control F on a keyboard and it will pop up a search where you can find content within that page. Now those are pretty universal. Those work across almost all programs. Um, they're pretty standard for programs to include those uh, keyboard shortcuts or hotkeys into what you're already doing. Now, Craig, are there any others that, that you love or that you use consistently? Um, trying to think. Find, copy, and paste. Those are probably, I mean, open. There's control open if you want to open a new tab yep. or open something up. Sometimes control I use that plus. one. Control plus and minus zoom. Yeah, zoom, zoom in, zooms and, zoom in out and out on the page right. is control yep. plus and minus. Um, yep. If you're working a lot in Canva, right? We taught a Canva class and we might have another master class coming up. We're getting a, a lot of demand. So I think we're going to do that. If you're, if you're working in Canva, you can use things like uh, control bracket bars and that will move the item vertically in a layer, meaning on top of or below one another, right? There are things like that. There's a whole world of keyboard shortcuts out there that I, I really, I hope that you take a little bit of time to learn because they are incredibly helpful uh, if you do take that time and, and start incorporating them into your business. So definitely, uh, a, definitely a big one. So Craig, do you want to see how much time we saved everybody today? Yeah, absolutely. All right, All right let's do it. So what do you think, everybody? Do we save you five minutes a day uh, searching your email? I think so, right? Do we save you about 10 minutes a day on your rules and your filters, setting up your inbox so that it's organized and that you can, in the morning, not have to one by one delete all your bulk and delete all your notifications and so on? You can deal with that in bulk. Do we save you 10 minutes a day on that? I hope so. Okay. Oh, Derek. I love you, Derek. Oh, my God. Um, control Z. Control Z. Undo. Oh, my God, Derek. How did I miss that one? Okay, for <laughs> so for the so for the three-year people, I think that we saw leave during before I mentioned this. Um, control Z is undo. Even in programs that often don't have an undo option inside of that program, Anything that you're typing in, et cetera, you hit control Z and all of a sudden it steps backward. You know why I didn't remember that one? I never made a mistake. That's why, right? Yep. <laughs> Here's the other one. Here's the other little one I'll add to it. There's a redo. True. It's, it's control shift Z. So if you hit control Z and you're like, oh, wait, no, I didn't really know it was better the other way. Control shift Z and it goes right back to what it was. So control Z, control shift Z, Derek, man, he's on it today. Derek, I love you, buddy. That was, that was epic. That's a really, no, that is really one of the best ones ever um, is control Z being able to undo, uh, undo stuff. I use it. I mean, I literally these, these hotkeys that I'm telling you about, these short keyboard shortcuts, I use dozens, if not hundreds of times a day, a day. Yep. To save time. Okay. It's not like, a, oh, I'll use this every now and again. When you incorporate this into what you're doing, you're all your, you're hitting shortcut keys all day and people go, wow, oh my God, you're a whiz. You fly. How do you fly around the computer so fast? How do you get things done so fast? How do you, it's because I took an extra couple minutes to learn some basic stuff 
um, like this and figure out how I can save that 10 seconds here, that 30 seconds there um, to, to do that. So I'm just going to leave you on this, um, which is, you know, what can you do? And, and I think one of the biggest things is, first of all, managing your time effectively and figuring out ways to save yourself the five minutes here, the 10 minutes there, the 15 minutes here or there. But what I also want you to think about is this. Humans have a very bad habit of wasting the time that they save, where I might save myself um, 10 minutes. Um, yeah, so sorry, before I get in that, Karen, yes. Control and command are interchangeable on PC versus Mac. Control on PC, command on Mac. Um, and they're like 98% of the same commands. All the ones we talked about today are identical. Uh, control well, A, Control C, Control, control v. v. by the way, printing. What? Can't forget about Yeah, Control P, P is print. Um, yeah. I mean, there's so many. I, I use them all the time. They're not, they almost come some naturally, but that is yeah. a great one as well. Yep, absolutely. So yes, they are they are interchangeable. Like 98, 99% of them work um, across both Mac and PC have like a couple weird, weird, like I'm sure you guys have never done this, but if you look at a Mac keyboard and a PC keyboard, they're different and not just with the command and control buttons, like how they're set up and what buttons are on them and the F buttons and all that are different. So there, when you get into weird edge cases, there are a few things that won't be the same, but 99% of it is the same. And everything we covered today is interchangeable, just command um, on a Mac versus control on a PC. Absolutely. So I don't want to distract from the point I want to make here. And Craig, I, I want to talk to you about this for a second. So I'll go back to interview. Um, people tend to waste the time that they save. Meaning if you save yourself an hour or two hours, okay, it's it's easy to think, oh, well, now I have two hours. I can go do this big, productive, large task. Okay. But when you save yourself five minutes in a given day or 10 minutes in a given day, it's very easy to spend that five minutes scrolling on Facebook or spend that five minutes, you know, going and cleaning something up around the house or putting the dishes away or whatever it is that distracts you. So, <laughs> What I, what I want to mention is that um, when you're saving these five, ten minutes at a time, be very cognizant about the time that you're booking. Meaning, um, when you save yourself five minutes, think to yourself, what is a productive task I can add to my day or replace in my day that is going to do something to increase my business because I save these five minutes here, 10 minutes there. So if you do save yourself five or 10 minutes and you know you're saving yourself that amount of time, maybe uh, book yourself some time, you know, once a week to spend an hour doing calls or sending out a newsletter, or sending emails or sending text message follow-ups to people or whatever it might be. Don't just think, oh, it's time saved and I'll just go about my day. Otherwise, be, be very, um, very structured and intentional about what you're going to do with that time that you save. So Karen mentions Mac has both control and command. Absolutely. So all I was saying is that on Macs, the command button is the same as the control button on PC. Mac then uses the control button on Macs for an entirely different thing. Right? My resident Mac expert, Craig, with the Mac in front of him. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> Sorry, I give Craig a hard time for using a for for when he bought his newest computer uh, for getting a Mac. So I love giving him a hard time about that. But yes, you're absolutely right. It has both. Um, all I was all I was talking about is that the equivalent of the two is Control on PC and Command on Mac, and then Control on Mac is just used for something else uh, when you're doing editing and some other stuff. So. All right. So that being said, um, any other questions? Did we save everybody a bunch of time today? I really hope we did. I, I hope we saved everybody a ton of time. I really appreciate everybody being here. Um, and while we're hearing back from everybody. Class, we're going to give some even better ones, such as like creating what are called templates or, you know, like drafts and all that kind of stuff can really save you even more time. Mm -hmm. 
You read my mind, Craig. I just put it up. What's next? Yeah, sorry. That's all good. No, no, no. <laughs> you, you take it away because what we're doing here is we're doing a master class um, coming up that is going to go into all of not only this, but the entire Google workspace in more depth. Yep. Craig, do you want to tell them about it a little bit? Absolutely. Well, I mean, sure you guys know, Alex and I are both huge evangelists of Google. We both use it to run our businesses on, uh, whether it's the Gmail suite, whether it's Google Docs on the office side. I mean, we do a lot um, of Google stuff. So, in fact, we both teach dedicated classes just about how to run your business on Google. So, the master class we're going to be doing on April 26, which is, what, next Monday? Um, yes, it is, is going to be a full deep dive on how to really get the most out of the whole Google experience. Like, so we're going to teach you the difference between the free Gmail and the paid Google workspace. And by the way, if you've been involved in the Google world for a while, it used to be called G Suite. G Suite's going away. The new name, the new platform is called Google workspace, but it's the same thing that G Suite used to be and before that Google work. I mean, Google keeps changing the name every couple of years. Uh, but we're going to really show you, even if you have a free Google account, how to get the most out of it. But if you go the paid route, we're going to show you the differences, um, how all the best add-ons are out there to make your account even better. Uh, a lot of little sneaky tricks like we taught you here today and a lot more. Absolutely. Um, so if you are interested in the masterclass, I posted the link uh, in chat, um, in comments there. So definitely sign up for that. Uh, if you sign up today, there will be a deal. Um, we prices go up tomorrow on this masterclass. So you save 10 bucks by signing up today. Um, normally $35 ticket today. It is $25. That is through, uh, the end of the day today. So sign up today. Yeah. Everyone and you save the pressure else. sales type, but we always make that discount a week out and we actually change this. So you guys, if you're here today can save that $10. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So if you're interested in that, uh, definitely sign up for the master class. Um, beyond that, I guess any other questions? Oh, and we have a, uh, let me ask people in chat before we do that. Um, we've gotten a bunch of requests for a, another Canva master class. Um, Craig and I did one, uh, months ago January. or January. Oh, okay. Um, that was and our first it was, January. yeah. And he's hugely attended and overflowing and, we gave away a ton of awesome stuff and agents loved it and so on. And we've been getting a lot of requests to do it again. So we're kind of asking as we do these workshops, is that something people would be interested in? Um, is a, a Canva class something you'd be interested in uh, signing up for if we were to do another masterclass version of that? Um, definitely let me know in chat as well uh, if that is something that you'd be interested in. Cool. So it looks like we're doing it 510. Um, we're still, we haven't actually published it yet. Um, but we, uh, we tentatively put it on the calendar today. All right. I think that about does it. Any yeah, questions? No, I mean, as usual, we went way beyond our 30 minutes. So <laughs> yeah, and that's sort of how we do, you know, Craig. Yep. We, we got, we got to give the people the value, you know? Great. Okay, I see Ronnie saying she's interested, so appreciate that, yes, Ronnie. You might want to click on that link. Again, it saves you that $10 today versus if you wait till tomorrow. So you might want to sign up. Or, they might, or Ronnie might be Canva interested one. in the Canva one. one. If it's the Canva one, um, if it's yep. the Canva one, we're going to be messaging, emailing, so on, posting in the group coming up uh, with that link for the Canva one coming up. So just be on the lookout for that. Um, we'll make sure to follow up with you on that one. Awesome. All right. So before we close it down here, uh, I just want to take it back. First of all, my good buddy, Craig, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Um, I greatly Absolutely. appreciate you being here as usual. Um, we're going to keep these going throughout the year. We're really excited to, to keep bringing these workshops to everybody uh, and try to give back a little bit of, of our knowledge to the community. Um, so if you haven't already, check out the RETI.us. That is the Real Estate Technology Institute. Uh, I am an instructor there. Craig is the founder, and it is a great resource for you for uh, any tech learning um, that you might want to do. So check that out. 
Additionally, if you are interested in any sort of uh, building a business by 100% referral, if you're interested in really not chasing clients anymore, but having deals come to you that referrals are coming in the door, um, you know, in fact, Derek, uh, Derek uses Service for Life. So Derek was in, um, in chat earlier and said, uh, control Z was one of the best AIC, one of the best AIC tricks that he learned. Um, but yeah, so Derek uses service for life. life what? <laughs> yeah, I think he called it a life, a life changer, life changer right? <laughs> um, hey, that's what we do out here. So no, but Derek also uses service for life. It is a, a way to follow up with your friends, family, past clients, uh, your sphere and get them sending you deals on a consistent basis. It has worked forever. It is proven um, by agents. So definitely, definitely, definitely check that out as well. So serviceforlife.com, that is serviceforlife.com, uh, as well as reti.us. All right. I'm going to actually post both of those in chat. There we go. Cool. All right. So I put both of those in chat. Awesome. All right. I think we're going to close it down. Uh, anything else, Craig? Nope. I think we're good. Sweet. All right. And Darren just said, Service Flight is by far the best constant contact platform ever. So nice little plug in it. I love yeah. it, buddy. It's so, well, it's so cool. Honestly, what I really love about it is it's so cool to see a product like this um, that has worked for 20 years in the industry, but then still keeps working for, you know, people like Derek, who's my age, you know, 30s and and like has a totally different um, demographic and people that he follows up with and so on than a lot of the agents who started doing this. So what it really shows me is it works. Um, it works across the board and, and works really well for people. So not to mention all these associations getting RETI as a, a membership is a pretty big uh, vote of true. confidence there as well. So it's, it's just great yep. to see success with the products that, you know, we, we put, you know, you and I, Craig, we put stuff out there that at the end of the day, our goal is that this thing works and does an incredible job for people. Right. Yep. And exactly. Um, when that happens and you do that for a consistent amount of time, um, Jeannie, Jeannie Hawkins also uses service for life. Wow. We got some SFL people in here. I love it. Um, Jeannie says my clients love it. Thank you so much. Oh, I love it. So I, I really appreciate everybody who's commenting about it. Um, definitely check it out. Like I said, we love building products that work for agents that get them successes. And when you do that for long enough, you start hearing back from all the people that it works so well for. So, all right, I think we're gonna close it down. Craig, any parting words? Yep. Nope, I think we've already done that like three times. Three I'm times, good. all right. Well, <laughs> hey everybody, save some time out there. Thank you so much. Uh, this is Alex Camilio and Craig Grant signing out.